Okay, well, let's talk really briefly about um, why SPSS might be a good option uh, for your research. Um, and I did want to point out that SPSS is not the only option. So there are competing statistical analysis packages, uh, SAS and R are probably two of the more common ones. Um, there is also um, options for keeping it simple and depending on the type of analysis that you are hoping to conduct, it might be that Microsoft Excel will do a completely acceptable job. But if you are needing to do statistical analyses such as ANOVA's t-test, chi-square correlation, that sort of thing, um, SPSS is a good user-friendly option. So unlike other stats software such as SAS and R, um, which both require that you learn programming language, which is all a bit scary, um, in contrast to that, SPSS is largely menu-driven. So it's pretty much point and click. The hardest part is figuring out what uh, analysis you need to run. It's also really, really quick to learn the basics, which is great. So these three sessions will take you up to probably about the intermediate uh, level of SPSS. Um, it's very intuitive, very quick to learn. Um, we caveat on that, which is it's actually so user-friendly. Uh, you need to be aware that it will allow you to run any statistical procedure you want, regardless of whether or not that makes sense to do so. So potentially you can run any test, even if that test is absolute nonsense. There's nothing in SPSS that's going to say, hey, that's not appropriate for these circumstances. It's actually just going to allow you to do it. So we're talking shortly about um, the need for a little bit of statistical expertise when you're using the software. Now, SPSS, uh, in comparison to software such as Excel, has an awful lot more features. Um, also in relation to data and file manipulation, which is uh, things we'll be covering both today and in session three. Um, when it comes down to it, while you can run uh, analyses in Microsoft Excel, um, there are some quite well-known issues with some of the formulas in Excel. And if you are needing to do the kinds of tests that I just mentioned, t-test, chi-square, and over that type of thing, uh, you'll actually get a more accurate result by using uh, SPSS. Now, SPSS originated in the social sciences, um, so the original acronym was Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. And a lot of people still think uh, it is um, that the letters SPSS are represented by that name. I actually just marked a pile of research proposals for my master's students and was amazed how many of them uh, made a very bold point about that that's what SPSS stood for. Um, they dropped uh, that particular set of words uh, quite a while ago. So it changed from statistical package uh, for the social sciences uh, changed to uh, statistical package and service solutions, which I thought was a terrible um, <laughs> uh, set of names to go with it. And then they actually ended up just referring to it as SPSS. Now, while it originated in the social sciences, it's now used for a massive range of disciplines. So uh, it's used for medicine and health, through engineering, through business, through social science and humanities. So um, it's certainly not just something that is used in social science. And a last really good reason for using it, it's quite widely available. So all three of the institutions that you folks are from uh, have SPSS licenses that you will be able to access. Does pay to access it through your institution. It is quite, quite expensive to purchase, so you wouldn't want to be accessing it um, outside of your organisation if you can help it. Now, if you need any more details, or um, if for any reason you don't have access uh, to the software, you can actually download a trial uh, from the SPSS website. Okay, that's the slides out the way. Let's get cracking with the software. So if you are planning to work along with me and you haven't already opened up SPSS, um, if you could do that now, that would be wonderful. Actually, I'm gonna come out of that to come back. 
And it might be useful for me to know actually how many of you are intending to work along because that might uh, impact how long I give for some of the exercises this morning. So could you perhaps either raise your hand or alternatively send me a message via the control panel. So if you are sitting there working along with me, uh, if you could either raise your hand or let me know via the control panel. So at the moment I've got Catherine and Rebecca have indicated that they are. Um, Noriko, if you could let me know either way if you're following along, that would be really helpful. Cool. Wonderful. Well, it looks like all three of you are following along, which I think is a good call. Um, if in terms of pace it becomes too quick or too slow or anything like that, just let me know, folks. I'm happy to adjust. Okay, well hopefully that gave you a chance to open up the SPSS software and uh, you will get something that looks like my screen. So it may look a little bit different if you are on version 22 or 23, um, but essentially you'll see a spreadsheet in the background and there'll be a dialog box at the front. And I'd like you to close or cancel uh, the dialog box. So we're just back looking at the spreadsheet in the background. Now we'll open up the first file that we'll be working with and then I'll talk about the layout of the spreadsheet. So coming up to the file menu and choose open and then come across and choose data. So that was file, open, data. And you'll need to navigate to wherever you save that folder. So uh, the Dropbox link that I sent everyone was a zipped version of a folder called SPSS Core Skills. So if you navigate to wherever you have saved that, I know that mine is on my desktop, then go into SPSS Core Skills and the file that you're looking for is the one called SPSS Tutor File. So I'm just going to double click that on my screen to open it up. And you should hopefully get something that looks like my screen. Now we'll talk very shortly about what's in here in terms of what all the variables are. Um, and if you are on an earlier version, just a note, um, there's some little pictures at the top of each of my columns here. You can see quite a few of them have a ruler, for example. I'm just sort of hovering over one now. Um, don't be alarmed if your version doesn't have that. That's one of the um, minor differences between this version and the earlier ones. So the first thing I want to say about this is it is a spreadsheet type format. So if you are competent with something like Excel, uh, this will look very familiar. Now where this is different to Excel is with a Microsoft Excel worksheet, you can actually type anywhere you want in the workbook. That's not a problem at all. SPSS in contrast has a very strict system where it requires your information, your data, to be in columns and rows. And the way this works is that your columns are the variables in your data set. This particular data set is based on questionnaire data, so each variable is an item on the questionnaire. The rows are your cases, and in this particular example, because we are working with questionnaire data, uh, the cases are each individual person that has completed the questionnaire. And if I scroll down, you'll see there's a decent amount of responses here. We've got uh, 243 in this particular data set. <coughs> 